Rich Brooks Show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Todd McKim along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at that uh, game in Seattle against the Washington Huskies, have a, a preview of a guy who may be changing positions in the very near future, Bobby Brothers, and preview what's uh, next for the Ducks, the Stanford Cardinal. Well, coach, you went to Seattle. You knew if you were going to have any chance against a very, very fine Husky team, you're probably going to have to play a perfect game, and it wasn't a perfect game, and as a result, uh, even though your team played well at times, the Huskies uh, got the victory. Well, they certainly did. Uh, they dominated our offense. Uh, we made enough mistakes uh, in, the, in the punt team alone with two block punts uh, uh, and an interception in the first half that set up some easy points for Washington. Uh, and we were unable to generate anything on offense. We had a couple of near misses. Uh, with the type of defense Washington plays, you have to make some big plays. We had several opportunities, Todd, but we didn't take advantage of any of them, and therefore, uh, we were unable to move the football and sustain anything. We only had 48 offensive snaps, and that put a real burden on our defensive unit who, who were on the field for 87 snaps. So we uh, get into action with the Ducks kicking off. Uh, temperatures in the mid-40s. There was uh, a wind throughout the course of the day, swirling at some times, but primarily blowing left to right as you look at the screen here. Short kick there. The tackle made by Muhammad Oliver and Paul Rodriguez. Uh, the only thing we've done well this year is we've won seven straight coin tosses. Early it looked like the Huskies wanted to establish some kind of a running game and uh, your defense uh, was up to the challenge. Good job uh, right there, Andy Connor forcing the play out wide, uh, Gary Williams, and uh, good job uh, by Farwell and Salila Malapiai in pursuit making the tackle. Next play we see is a third down and 12. Hobart throwing a football, Bailey on the reception, good enough for the first down. Uh, they, uh, they really hurt us on the inside seams in zone, and they hurt us uh, with completions of the corners in man-to-man. -man. Nice pressure there off the corner, and uh, force an incomplete pass. Holbert back to throw, and he's sacked by Terrell Edwards, a young sophomore linebacker who got his first start in this game. Now you can see him beat uh, big Lincoln Kennedy, the 325-pound listed that weight anyway tackle for Washington, number 75. You're saying you, you think he might be a little bit heavier? I, I think he might be. No uh, room to run inside with Burwell. I think we gained about a yard. Doug Musgrave back to throw. Pumps goes deep. Just uh, a little slightly over. Those are the type of plays I mentioned earlier at the onset of the show. That a chance for big plays. You need to make some. Uh, we needed to get that ball in front of him so he could handle it and have a chance to run on the linebacker. We come up short and had to punt the ball away. So the Huskies get it back, and this is one of their two long offensive drives of the day uh, where they started in their own territory and got a score. And yet still, their defense uh, was pretty stingy. Gary Williams, uh, in his second start, makes a nice play here. You can see him come from the backside again, shoving big Lincoln Kennedy uh, into the hole, coming off of that block and making the tackle for about a one-yard gain. Second down and nine, the ball now at the Oregon 39. Herman O'Berry on the blitz, gets help uh, inside from Romeo Bannis, and Romeo played a, a fine football game. Uh, gave us uh, good pressure on the pass rush. You can see him in there forcing the, the back to cut back into Herman O'Berry, who's coming in on the blitz, and he also gets some help from Chad Cota. Third red shirt freshman. That's though. right, exactly. Third and nine, and they pick up the first down. Gaspard on the reception. Uh, this was our probably one of our worst performances on uh, third down plays. Uh, we've been only allowing our opponents about 28% completion on third down, and in this game they got 50%. Fourth down play here, and the Huskies go for it, and... Uh, they get a good spot. They got the spot where he rolled. <laughs> exactly right. So they try to keep it on the ground, and still not a whole lot going. In fact, through the first half, I think they were under three yards in attempt rushing. We were doing a good job on the running game early, uh, and here uh, we have the ball actually in our hands, and, and Mario Bailey takes it away uh, from Daryl Smith for the touchdown. I mean, we're in position to make the play. We don't make the play. They make the big play. We don't make it. So the Huskies that take the lead 7 to nothing. You get the football back on the next possession. A little out pattern, kind of a crossing pattern as Jones was in the slot, and he gets 10 and a first down. Good protection on the blitz. Here you can see the slant pass over the middle. Musgrave double pumps and throws complete to Anthony Jones. 
This is actually a replay of a, a play that we're going to see later on, I think, Todd. That's right. Uh, that play actually uh, set up this situation where the Ducks have to punt the football. Returned. Uh, this is the one our right end turned uh, player loose the ball. If we'd have handled the ball behind the line of scrimmage and then advanced it, we'd have had the first down. Well, we're ready for the second quarter highlights. The Huskies leading the Ducks 7 to nothing, and as we pick up play in the second uh, quarter, the Huskies have the football, and uh, boom. On a third and five, Hobart to Bailey, 29 yards, and the score. Carol Smith got beat on the inside on the blitz. Uh, nice job here. Uh, we put three big, tall offensive linemen in the center because Washington's been kicking some low ones, and uh, Dan Mitchell actually blocked that one. He's six foot seven. He plays offensive guard. Must have felt good. I think he's from Renton, Washington, yes, so he, he was uh, heading home this weekend. A little off tackle play picks up about three and a half yards. Come back on the counter. We pop it clean. Walter Bailey comes over from the offside to make the tackle. Now Juan Shedrick picks up the first down. Those uh, holes and seams don't last very long against that defense. And you can see a Musgrave there sacked by Steve Entman. The only sack of the day given up well, by your offensive and, line. And actually, that should not have been registered as a sack. It was a quarterback draw. We had people down the field, but I'm sure they're not going to change that. And here's uh, the second block punt. Uh, bad job by our uh, protection unit and a little bit of a high snap. And Holbert throws over the middle. They got a 15-yard personal foul penalty after that block. Uh, which set them up in a uh, dead ball situation of first and 25. Nice job there by Daryl Smith knocking them loose from the football. And Eric Castle almost had an interception. Bounced off of his uh, leg, I believe. Nice replay here. You can see the hit jars him loose. And uh, just it was real hard to handle that uh, ricochet. And uh, we forced him into a field goal. And uh, this is kind of the way our season's gone, Todd. They were two for seven in field goals before our game. And they were three for three against us. Yeah, the things in the paper and uh, the whole bit about Travis Hansen struggling and so forth, and he uh, seemed to snap out of things. And, and this is Doug's only real bad throw here to Walter Bailey. Uh, Sean Burwell saved the touchdown there. They get called for excessive celebration. 15-yard penalty, first and 25, which really helped us in this situation. Nice tackle by Chad Cota. Replay again here. You can see. Check off, little dump pass out in the flat. And Jones, their fullback, is tackled by Chad Cota and gets some help from Terrell Edwards. Yeah, that's the way you make tackles, that's for sure. So Hansen comes in this time. He boots it through from 28 yards. And the Huskies uh, take advantage of the turnover, the interception, and now have 19. Nice pass to Brian Brown on a slant over the middle. Doug Musgrave completing it for the first down. You can see it on the ground level replay here. Nice job. Hits Brian in stride and picks up the first down. Gain of 15 yards. You're now inching closer to that midfield stripe. And then this is a good play by Musgrave to pick up six yards and the first down. But on first down, Burwell knocked for a five-yard loss. Blitz uh, by Tommy Smith, their rover back, and he comes in and tackles for a loss and throw a screen out to Donovan Moore. And he's tackled by Dana Hall after about a three-yard game. So he had to give the football up, had to punt it away, force the Huskies deep in their territory. Big hit by Eric Castle, but Bailey holds on. Nice catch by Bailey, because that was a, a big league hit by Castle. They try to go deep on Muhammad Oliver. And this time, two track guys go up for the ball, and it's the uh, Pac-10 high jump champion that comes down with it. This is his first interception this year, and it's a nice play. He's in good position, uses his body to shield the receiver off, and makes the interception. Unable to move it, though, and uh, so there was a, a play here that it's hard to tell if this ball hits a Washington man or not. If it hit Palco or not, you just can't tell. And Brandon Jumper wasn't going to take any chances, and he. Well, you can't advance it yeah. regardless, but uh, it looked like it had a, a chance, and you can't tell uh, on our coaching films either, Todd, whether it actually hit him or not. But it took a funny bounce off the turf if it didn't hit him. Hobart, Romeo Bandison with his first sack since the Washington State game, I believe. He uh, he was given good pressure all day long, and he certainly is uh, penetration here. He's uh, getting held uh, a little bit. Uh, 
that breaks through and throws Holbert to the ground. Uh, we went from a situation where they were calling timeouts to, to us using them to, to try to get field position. We force him into a punting situation here after the sack. Ryan Brown gets it and gets up to about the, the 46 yard line. And we're trying to get something on the board before half. Uh, nice protection there. Musgrave steps up and hits Anthony Jones for the first down. Those are the kind of decisions that Doug was making in this game, looking off the primary or even the secondary guy and finding a, the third guy. A good job, uh, Burwell helping Heath Howington uh, on the protection there of uh, Etman. And uh, we complete it and get out of bounds, importantly, to stop the clock. We run the option pitch here. Burwell needed to cut back, didn't. He fumbles, and we lose our field goal opportunity as well as Musgrave because when he was tackling there, he, that's where he broke the finger. He says he's not sure whether he caught it in a shoulder pad or what, but it, it, it broke right there. The uh, Ducks had kicked off to start the football game, so to start the second half, they will get the football as the Huskies will boot it away, and Oregon working into a win to start the third quarter. This is a first down and 10 play after the Ducks to get a first down on a, uh, after a personal foul by the Huskies. And then Croston uh, throwing it. Ooh! Dana Hall is a big corner, and uh, he deflected it away at the last minute, then intercepted by Powell Again, Cole. That's one of those plays I alluded to where you've got an opportunity to make a big play. We had him beat. The pass was just a little bit underthrown, but Dana Hall made a great play, and instead of us having a long gain or a possible touchdown, they've got the ball deep in our territory. Sudden change. Uh, Huskies have it deep in your territory, but uh, your defense really, wouldn't let them get anything. Really responded much better. Nice play there by... Uh, Rodriguez and uh, you'll see Muhammad Oliver come up from the corner Rodriguez 25 coming from the inside but Muhammad Oliver plays off the block of uh, Orlando McKay and makes the tackle and gets help from Rodriguez uh, in the Cal game the sudden change uh, defense was not very good they took almost every one of them in for touchdowns and in this situation uh, we did a good almost should have had another, another interception we could have shut them out without anything right there uh, goes through Muhammad's hands and they had to settle for a field goal Hansen comes in, connects on his third field goal of the day from 33 yards out. And so you see it's 22 to nothing. The Ducks forced to punt it. Real high snap. Uh, we got away with that one. Tommy just pulled it down and got it, got it off. And uh, our coverage, uh, Dean O'Brien, I'm sure Coach James isn't very happy with that move. Uh, nice, nice tackle there by Herman O'Berry for a 16-yard loss or 17-yard loss on the return. Uh, they would have had pretty good field position if he just doesn't retreat here. They handle the ball at the 27-yard uh, line, and you can see uh, Matt Sliman misses the tackle there, a redshirt freshman. Castle chases him deep. Jumper comes off, and here comes Herman O'Berry, uh, who's playing some awfully good football for a redshirt freshman. Indeed he is. Bryant's got a lot of confidence in his abilities, but that's one I'm sure he would like to have back. Nice play by O'Berry, and then... Jones breaks to the outside on a little cutback. The, uh, just a bad defensive play there by us. We, uh, we, our pursuit angles on the backside broke down. We over-pursued and allowed the cutback and uh, let him out of the hole when we had him in real good field position. Almost come up with an interception there. Uh, good pressure off the corner on the blitz, and Castle uh, recovers after being beat on the play fake for a near interception. And there's a nice play by their tight end, and, and Holbert throwing a nice pass for the first down on third down. A right knee right and went down there and uh, he was marked for a loss. Good job by Terrell Edwards blowing in there, taking out the block. You can see it on the replay. Dives in and his knee is down right there. And they, the referee didn't see it. Thank God the, uh, the flank official did. So, second down play. That is a bad, bad call. I guess I better not say too much after seeing what happened to Bill, Bill Mallory. Mallory at Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> nice tackle there. Uh, by Batista. Good job by Batista and Chad Coda. You got to remember how big this offensive line is that uh, Washington has. Uh, you know, they got a number of guys up around that 300 yard mark, uh, many of them, uh, you know, all American candidates. Yes, they, they're, they're physical, but uh, our, we stayed on the line in the running game pretty well. Fourth down play here. Well, Terrell that's a great Edwards. surge. Yeah, it is. Terrell Edwards makes it. A pinch move comes inside their tight end. Uh, you can see him at the top of your screen. Romeo Bannison gets penetration. Terrell Edwards gets penetration. And he gets help there from Eric Castle. 
You know, the thing is, at this point, you're trailing 22 nothing. The offense has struggled, yet your kids are still playing hard, and that, yeah. I think, was encouraging. Certainly a uh, better effort than we'd had, uh, although the execution wasn't quite as good uh, as it needs to be. The effort was there. Croston, this is another big play. There is no one covering Jeff Thompson. That is at least a 50-60 yard play, maybe a touchdown, and we throw it behind him. Yeah, because the two wide receivers and the two corners that were covering them were both way outside the hash marks. Terrible play there, terrible judgment. Uh, fortunately, he was hit, uh, and uh, roughing the passer was called to nullify that interception. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, Huskies really only had two long sustained scoring drives, uh, one in the first uh, quarter and one in the fourth quarter, and that was it. And when we pick up action here in the fourth period of play, the Huskies have the football and they're uh, moving it. They've got the ball second and 10 at their own 45. Hobart, the pass to the outside to McKay. Good for 13 and a first down. From the 42, McKay again, this time he spins inside, breaks a couple of tackles, and gets the football to the 25-yard line. Now the next play we see is a third and a one, and he barely makes this one. And on second and six, big play by the defense. Not a good pass. Gary Williams with his first interception. Those defensive linemen, we work on those pass interception drills a lot with them, you know. <laughs> good pressure here by Romeo Bandison. Excellent pressure, forcing him out of the pocket. And then here comes Andy Connor, and Romeo's right in his face here, and he just throws it away. Very bad decision on his part, and Gary Williams making a great break on the ball. <laughs> Didn't show his old fullback moves there very well, or did he? Just went down pretty easy. We'll hear from him in the post-game interviews as to why he didn't return that very far. He's a little tired. Yeah, that's what he said. A lot. <laughs> Huskies get it back, though, because the Ducks unable to move it. Hobart uh, scrambles out of the pocket and gets some positive yardage there. Salila with a big right meat hook grab of the jersey pulls him down there. And a nice pass there to Bailey, but a nice tackle by Herman O'Berry. First down and 10. You know, Bryant tackled by Castle. We'll take a look at that one again. Chad Cota forces the sweep a little too deep, gets knocked down, blocked, and uh, Bino takes it up and then breaks back out. And here comes Castle from his free safety position, making a real nice play on the ball. Made up a lot of ground there. Third down and nine. Here's where you're talking about the third down conversions. Bailey's just all alone just in the zone. Just wide there. open. Just terrible coverage in our zone and allowed him uh, on third down to convert and keep this drive alive, which eventually results in this play for the touchdown. Uh, we got turned completely around in the corner and Orlando McKay was wide open. So those are the final points that the Huskies score in this game. 29 to nothing. And the Ducks trying to get something going. Croston rolling out here, though. Throws it down the middle, and it is uh, picked off by Jones. But uh, real bad decision on his part to throw that. And here comes Burnell handing off to their true freshman, uh, Napoleon Kaufman, who has great speed. We hold him there, and Muhammad Oliver makes up for a tough day that he's had covering their receivers by blocking the punt. Chad Cota alertly handles it and returns it uh, 20 yards down deep into their territory. You can see from the left of your screen, Muhammad does a good job of getting blocked, but lunges in there and gets a piece of that ball. And Chad Cota handles it in, in midair. And a real nice uh, alert play by both Muhammad Oliver and Chad Cota. And so one play later, the offense comes on the field from the 26-yard line, give it to Burwell over the left side. and. Great effort here to lunge and get into the end zone for the touchdown. The first points scored against the Washington defense in the fourth quarter of any game this year. And uh, I might add, Todd, the first touchdown scored on him in Husky Stadium in four games. Uh, just a simple, uh, what we call a wham or blast play inside. It's straight head uh, coming in here. Brandon Jumpers, the fullback, he comes in and actually helps clean up our left guard's block picks up the linebacker, and Burwell runs it up in there and does a good job of tackling tight end, block out, creating a hole, 
and Burwell makes a nice cut, as you saw, on the safety and a great effort to keep his balance and go into the end zone. So let's take another look at it again. You can see Brandon Jumper lead in there, kind of gets a cleanup block on the guard and then gets, actually blocks the safety, I'm sorry, rather than the linebacker and knocks him past. And a real good effort there by Burwell lunging into the end zone. So the uh, point after is also good by McCallum. And uh, that concludes the scoring, and it concludes the highlights in this game as the Huskies defeat the Ducks the final 29-7. to Let's take a look at some of the statistics from this one. And you take a look at first downs, a whopping advantage for the Huskies. Uh, offensively, they rack up 457 yards uh, of offense, actually uh, 67 yards. And then total offense, 129 to 467. Flip it over and look at some of the other stats. Penalties, uh, neither team, I'm sure, is real pleased in that department, but the Huskies with the 13 penalties, that's 20, let's see, that's 30 accepted penalties that uh, you've had in the last uh, two games against Cal and Washington. Turnovers, 4-2. to two. Punting, because of the blocked punts, and neither uh, team had much success in that department. And third down conversions, the coach alluded to that, the defense having done well all year long, but permits 50%, and the offense only able to pick up 2 of 12. Individual passing, Musgrave, 6 of 13 for 57 yards. He was intercepted once. Croston was uh, 2 of 8 for only 7 yards, and he was picked off a couple of times. Billy Joe Hobart, who's been taking some flack up there for, for some reason, completes 23 out of 36 uh, for 256 yards, and, and yet uh, some folks up there didn't feel he had a very good day. Sean Burwell, 19 for 48. Barry, 20 for 84. Well, after the game, we went into the locker room to get some reaction from some of the players, including Gary Williams, who talks about his uh, big interception. The offensive linemen, they, they, had, they had pretty good Christmas. They were coming off the ball pretty good. They were coming off the ball real, real good for big guys. And they, the, the, they, the cutback, the backs were cutting back a lot. They weren't, they weren't going to specific gaps. They were cutting it back. So that you had to hold your gaps real good. I looked up, quarterback rolled out to the right. Looked up and the ball was just there. And so I, got it. I tried to run back as far as I could, but I was tired. <laughs> I was tired, but I just there. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time, you know. I think, you know, a lot of sudden, sudden changes were, were put upon the defense, and um, I think we answered it, you know, pretty good. And um, all we need to do is just go back and work a little bit harder, get ready for snap. I thought we played real hard. Um, you know, I thought there was a lot of motion and intensity out there. Um, you know, we were put in some tough situations uh, again today. Um, you know, I think a couple times, you know, we held the field goals two or three times, and, uh, you know, that, that feels good. Um, you know, we gave them a couple big plays that really hurt us, um, you know, a couple big pass plays where they scored. Uh, but other than that, you know, I thought we played pretty good. I was starting to feel good in the first half, starting to feel comfortable, and I was actually pretty fired up, you know, that we were running no hard up the end. I was fired up in the second half, maybe sneaking the scores in the first half. And fired up and just, I don't know, it's kind of a freak thing that happened, I guess. I guess, you know, if you're going to play sports, you got to be ready to do that, you know. That's I mean, the way life is, you know, can, you don't know what the day is going to hold for you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the day was going to hold for me, so I was hoping it'd be a great day for me, but uh, it didn't turn out that way. I was just thinking, this, uh, let's get some points on the board, you know. It's, it's, it's tough to come in against UW because they, they just do so many things well, and I was just thinking, just do, do your responsibility and do the best you can, make things happen and not break down the team. But unfortunately, that's not the way it went. I think it's Edmund. I mean, I think, I think the D-line's the best part of the uh, defense. They do everything. They uh, blitz well and uh, they get off blocks real good. They, I mean, there's a hole and they get off to get to the uh, ball real quick. So let's take a look at some of the highlights of the Stanford uh, Cardinals. They took on USC a couple of weeks ago down at the Coliseum and came away with that very impressive victory of 24 to 21. And this is the guy you're talking about, Glenn Milburn, touted as a Heisman Trophy candidate to start the season, but uh, really hasn't gotten on track until the last week or so. The quickest uh, back we'll see, he can change direction and be at full acceleration in one step, and he can change direction uh, very quickly and abruptly on it. And he hurts you in a number of different ways. He's a receiver, he can run it, he's on punt returns, uh, you know, they get him the ball as much as possible. Punt returns, kickoff returns, you can see he has good balance. Uh, extremely uh, good uh, feet and speed and quickness. I think last year he was well over 2,000 yards of all-purpose yardage. And, and Burwell had a great year with about 1,600. There's Tommy Vardell, who was just basically used last year in goal line and short yardage. And 
has developed into an all-around player this year, and uh, boy, I've been extremely impressed with him as a runner. I, I think he's a heck of a player. Take a look at Chris Walsh coming up right here. We'll make a tough catch over the middle. He, uh, he makes uh, some real tough catches. Uh, does an excellent job, and their defense has been playing very aggressive and very well, creating a lot of turnovers. I think they forced Oregon State into 10 fumbles uh, yesterday, recovering uh, six. You can see they put a lot of pressure on people. Uh, they've moved some offensive yeah. linemen over to defense, and they're really uh, shrinking the pocket on people. That's what makes it even more remarkable, yeah. as well as they're playing. They're playing with people that started the year as offensive linemen. They've had so many injuries, kind of like, like you have had, only they've actually moved people from the offensive set. Well, you've got to remember, they've been ranked in the top uh, 15 or 20 recruiting classes in the nation almost every year. All right. Let's take a look uh, a little further about Stenstrom. He's a guy that obviously we haven't seen a whole lot of. Uh, Columbus was the quarterback last year, set some school records with regard to passing efficiency and so forth. Stenstrom comes in and uh, he actually elevates their play, it looked like, compared to what uh, Jason had been able to do early in the year. Well, I think Columbus has been a, a good quarterback for him, but uh, Stenstrom, uh, sometimes a change like that uh, brings on a, a fresh look and a little different uh, atmosphere. And, He's throwing the ball, it appears to me, down the field better, uh, getting it to the wide receivers, making the, the longer throw a little better than Plumbus was making it. Plumbus was real good at dumping it off mm -hmm. to, the, to the backs and tight ends, but uh, Stenstrom's doing a good job throwing it down the field. And, uh, you know, we tried to recruit him out of high school, but he wouldn't visit us. Well, that does it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week as the Ducks take on the Stanford Cardinal, a big game here at Otson Stadium. And be nice to see a lot of you folks out there for that one. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. This is the Rich Brooks Show, featuring the Oregon Ducks. Brought to you in part by Taylor Electric.